Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Champion Forest. To all of our first time guests out there, if you're visiting in person or online, we are so glad to have you here with us. Go ahead and take out your phone right now and text the word guest to 77069. This lets us know you were here and allows our team to connect with you so that we can help you in any way. Before the service gets started, we wanted to take just a moment to talk to all the gals. Ladies, be sure and get your tickets now for our upcoming Abide Girls Night Out with Christy Knuckles, which is just one week away. We're inviting our Champion Forest women of all ages to come together at our North Klein campus for this special event with tons of fun activities. We'll have fair trade shopping, photos with friends, sweet desserts, coffee, worship with Christy Knuckles, and so much more. Worship begins at 6 p.m. in the Worship Center at North Klein, but come early and stay late for all of the other exciting things happening. The event is limited seating, so again, you'll want to secure your tickets today. Text ABIDE to 77069 or go to championforest.org. Remember, you can always learn more about all the events happening around the church by checking out the weekly news. The full rundown of what you need to know is just a text away. Once again, welcome to Champion Forest. We hope you are blessed and encouraged by all you experience today. And now let's open our hearts as we worship the Lord together. Good morning, Champion Forest. Would you stand with us? Let's sing together and declare the goodness of our God. Enter into His presence together. Come on, sing it with me.
and that's our prayer that God would open up the heavens and fill this place, fill our hearts, fill our lives, fill our families with his presence. We're glad you're here with us this morning. If you're a guest with us, I hope you'll take just a second and text the word guest to 77069. Again, that's the word guest to 77069. If you're joining us online, we're glad to have you with us. Hey, would you take just a second, turn to somebody beside you, tell them good morning, tell them you're looking good this morning.
go before the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords for just a moment and just pause in his, in his presence and just say, God, we want to call upon the name of the Lord who is strong enough to save. In church, we just sang that shackles are broken, chains, bondage is, is, is released, chains are broken, lives are healed because of the shed blood of Jesus. And Lord, I, I just pray this morning, if there are people in this room who need to hear that message, if there are, there are those of us in this room who need to be released, who need to be, who need to be healed, who need to, to know that you are the chain breaker, I pray that we will call upon the name of the Lord who is strong enough to save this morning. God, we know that your word says that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess the name of Jesus, that you are the Lord of lords and the King of kings and sovereign. And God, we just pause in this moment and we just say thank you. Thank you that you have pursued us. Thank you that you have redeemed us. Thank you that you have chosen us, that you have called us, that you've called us sons and daughters, heirs children of the King. What a, what a beautiful thought. What a beautiful reminder that you have set us aside. You've called us and we are created to bring you glory. And so Lord, this morning we pause for just a moment and we call upon the name of the Lord who is strong enough to save. i 
love that song. I love that verse. You have no rival. You have no equal. And it's very true. Jesus has no rival, no equal, because only Jesus came to this earth, 100% man, 100% God. The Bible teaches that he went to a cross and he died on a cross for our sins, his shed blood. That's what makes you right with God. And the scripture says, by faith in him, your sins can be forgiven. You can have a purpose in life. He can restore that which is broken. Only Jesus can do this. That's why his name has no rival. It has no equal. Only Jesus can change your life. And it is the message of this church. And if you're here today and you don't know Christ in a personal way, you came to the right place, I hope that you'll stay with us this whole time uh, because this is who we're about here at Champion Force. We're about a who way more than a what. And that who is the name of Jesus. Uh, we love him and uh, we offer him our lives. I want you to go ahead and be seated. And as you're taking a seat, in just a moment, we're going to receive the morning offering as an act of worship and an act of service. But before we do that, but before our men take their places, uh, I wanted to just uh, publicly recognize uh, one of the ministers on our staff, a great pastor who uh, this happens to be his last Sunday with us, and I'll tell you why here in just a moment, but would you welcome uh, Joey and his wife Renee Mouton to the platform this morning. Joey came to Champion Force 14 years ago. He'd been serving uh, our church for 14 years. He started off serving in our singles ministry. Did a wonderful job there, and then he went to the IT ministry, did a little bit of that there. He's kind of a jack-of-all-trades. Uh, went from there to our communications, and then a few years ago, when our church uh, had the vision to explore this CMC, this community ministry center, if you will, to reach into our community, we tasked Joey with making that happen, and he has done an incredible job leading this ministry over these years, and just to brag on him a little bit, and to brag on God, uh, I want you to consider these numbers from this past year. We just ended our church year. Our, our first year of our new church year is this weekend. Uh, we do that for a number of reasons that aren't important. But uh, to close out this year, I'm going to be bringing you uh, some numbers of what God has done recently uh, this past year. I'll bring those numbers to you here in a couple of weeks. But just for the CMC, this year, 606 families from our community that we serve. Uh, over 10,000 volunteer hours. So many of you serve in this great ministry, and I want to thank you for your service. And Joey helps lead and organize this. 103,000 grocery items were distributed. Uh, just amazing. And if you ever want to help, you can just text CMC to 77069. If you'll text that uh, CMC to 77069, we'll get in touch with you about how you can even help uh, more. Uh, but here's the number that I love. 112 salvations this year through our CMC. People coming in the door. And, uh, of course, we meet a physical need. But as I just mentioned, we are way more concerned with meeting that spiritual need. Both are important. Uh, both are needed. Over 1,000 homeless served, 3,500 meals served, 3,500 dresses uh, that were sewed and sent off to uh, the ministry that we partner with uh, in Haiti. And uh, all of this is under the leadership of Joey. Joey came to us a couple of weeks ago and said God's been working in his heart. And he has accepted a call to another partner ministry that we help with here in the church called Hope Haven. And so this is his last Sunday on staff here. He's going to begin going and serving uh, with Hope Haven uh, starting this next week. And so I just wanted to bring he and Renee up here and let you, Champion Force, express your thanksgiving uh, to this servant of Christ who's worked so faithfully in our church. Would you just join me in saying thank you to him? We're going to pray for him and Renee. Just remain standing. We're going to have a prayer for Joey and Renee. And uh, men, if you would, take your place uh, for the morning offering. And I do want you to know as well uh, that our eyes are on what's been going on in Florida and the East Coast as it relates to uh, the hurricane. We've been in talks with some of our pastors through our CF Connect about how we can help. You can always give 
uh, to a fund, a disaster relief fund that we have designated. If you choose to give in that way, uh, we'll be letting you know in the coming weeks how we can help. But our ear is to the ground. We want to pray for those uh, that are in the path of the hurricane, walking through that uh, now, and uh, just know that our hearts are with them. So let's go to the Lord in prayer and uh, just thank God for his presence here today and ask his blessing on Joey, Renee, these services. And Father, it is in the name of Jesus that we bow before you. And Lord, we give you thanksgiving. Uh, God, we thank you for uh, Joey and his ministry here at Champion Forest. Uh, Lord, uh, the lives that have been impacted because of his reach into this community. And I just pray, Lord, just from the reception of this church, that he and Renee would know how much they're loved, how much they're valued. I pray your blessing on them as they continue your work through Hope Haven. And we thank you for that ministry, Lord, a partner ministry here in this church, uh, to helping the homeless. And uh, Lord, uh, we thank you for leading Joey there and just pray a blessing on he and his family. Lord, for those that are in the path of the hurricane this past week, uh, God, uh, those of us in Houston uh, know very well what that's like. And so, Lord, we pray uh, for the people there who are hurting, who are starting the rebuilding process. God, would you just go before them? Would you just be with them? Be very present, uh, Lord, in their time of need. And for this service today, uh, God, we want to hear from you. Uh, Lord, we thank you that we can gather around the teaching and preaching of your word here in just a moment and take it in. Would you speak to our hearts? Uh, Lord, we want to leave here uh, differently than when we came in, and that only happens if your Holy Spirit takes your holy word and, Lord, allows the seed of your word to plant root in our hearts so that it produces fruit in the days to come. And so, God, we ask you to do what only you can do in this moment, and we trust you for it. Thank you for the opportunity to give. Uh, Lord, it is an act of worship that we return to you what is rightfully yours. And we pray that you would bless this offering in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Go ahead and be seated.
Come on, sing it out. Yes, I join with him and bow before Jesus, only Jesus. You know, the Bible says that there is no other name in heaven or on earth by which anyone can be saved. There's salvation in the name of Jesus. There's freedom in the name of Jesus. Forgiveness, righteousness, whatever you need is found in him. In response to that name, let's give him the highest praise this morning. Let's sing. You will come yes, the highest praise. shouted, Amen, Amen. You may be seated. Amen. invite you to take God's word and turn with me to Matthew chapter 22 as well as Luke chapter 10. These are the two passages that we're going to be looking at today. I am excited to begin this new series that we're calling Bless. And I've got to tell you, this may be the most simple, easy to apply and practical message series that I've ever preached. And I was inspired to do this series for a number of reasons. First, when I moved here, just 20 months ago, began to drive around and was just amazed at the number of people that lived in this concentrated area. Uh, in fact, uh, we've been doing some research uh, just as a team here, and I've got this map for you. I want to show it to you. Uh, right here, just in this red area, that represents a 20-minute drive from the Champions Campus. Uh, so you can see our Jersey Village really doesn't touch it, just the very outskirts. Our North Klein is included in that just a little bit. Uh, but this map represents a 20-minute drive from the campus that we're at right here, our Champions Campus. Now, within this map of red right here is 560,000 people within a 20-minute drive. And what we're being told is, uh, by those who are studying the demographics, that by the year 2027, there will be well over 600,000 people within a 20-minute drive uh, to our campus. Uh, we're also a very diverse church. I'm grateful to God uh, for our diversity that uh, we reflect what the kingdom of God looks like and want to do that more and more and more. And 
Uh, just for knowledge's sake, you may find it interesting. In this map of red, you'll see the demographics here. Uh, I want to just show you uh, the numbers. 37% white, uh, 33% Hispanic or Latino, 20% African American, 8% Asian, and 2% other. Again, that's just within a 20-minute drive of our campus. Now, I tell you that to say that last week we had over 5,200 people uh, here on our Champions campus. That's in this worship service, that's in our Spanish worship service right after, it's over in our children's building, and that's wonderful, 5,200 people. Uh, but I show you these numbers uh, and tell you the numbers because 5,200 people is wonderful, but we still have an awful lot of work to do. And if our purpose in life is to glorify God, and it is, and our purpose in life is to reach people who are far from God, and it is, um, well, think about it in the context of what we're talking about. Those 600,000 people live around you. They live around me. They're in our neighborhoods. They're in our apartment complexes. All of these people that we're talking about live right next to us. And as a pastor, I look at these homes and I read these statistics. And i got to tell you, my heart begins to be burdened because these are all people who Jesus has died for. And the question that I ask as pastor leading this church is this. Are we doing everything in our power to reach them? Seeing this vast number of people, knowing that the mass majority do not know Jesus in a personal way. That's what first ignited in my heart, this desire to preach a series like this. Secondly, as I was driving around thinking about these numbers, seeing all these people, I was given a book, introduced to a book by the name of Bless, B-L-E-S-S. -S. And here's the subtitle. Five Everyday Ways to Love Your Neighbor and Change the World. It's written by two pastors, and it's a very simple book. And as I read the message, I, I knew this, but it was just reinforced in reading this book that the single greatest way that we can reach the world is starting to reach those around us, those that God puts us in the path of, those that are in our circle of influence. God's given every single one of us a circle of influence. People in our life, we work with them, we live in the same neighborhoods as them, we are in school with them, on teams with them. God has orchestrated, and it's no mistake that he's put us in these areas. Acts 17, 26, he ordains the exact times and places that we should live. It is no accident that you live in that neighborhood, go to that school, work in that office. No accident at all that God has put people around you that need a relationship with him. And the challenge of this series is, what would happen if each of us became very, very intentional about praying for people that need to know him and blessing them, as this series is called, in his name. Now, there's no question about it. If you're a follower of Jesus, there is a desire in you that people would know Jesus. God puts that desire in you at salvation. You've experienced his love, his grace, his forgiveness, and you want people to experience that as well. God places this desire in you. George Barna, who's been studying the church for years, studying Christians and culture, he released a study in 2019, just a couple of years ago, and practicing Christians were given this statement. Part of my faith means being a witness for Jesus. 96% of the practicing Christians that read that statement strongly agreed or somewhat agreed with the fact that they should be a witness for Jesus. We all want to be sharing our faith. We all know its importance. All of us have a desire. We want to. We know we need to. But it's also a reality that on a routine 
and consistent basis, most of us don't. And that's what this series is all about. Talking about statistics from a Lifeway research study. This is interesting. They polled 2,000 unchurched Americans, 2,000 people that don't go to church at all. 47% said they would be open to having a conversation about faith and religious matters. That number jumped to 79% saying they wouldn't mind having a conversation about faith and religious matters, especially with a friend, someone they trusted, someone they knew. But here's the deal. Only 29%. That's 3 in 10 said that a Christian has ever shared with them one-on-one how they could become a Christian. In other words, we have a lot of people that live within a 20-minute radius of this church that are more than willing to have a spiritual conversation, interested in faith matters. A lot of people out there that are willing to have that conversation. The truth is, We don't have that many that are willing to have the conversation. I don't bring this up to guilt us. Most of us know we could be doing better as it relates to sharing our faith. We know we need to be sharing Jesus more, but for a variety of reasons, we simply don't. And again, this is what this series is all about. If I didn't call this name of this series blessed, if I didn't rip it off from these pastors who wrote a book about it, I would have called it Sharing Jesus for Dummies. You know what I'm talking about? You've been to the bookstore, you see those yellow books, they take a complex subject and they break it down into simple terms so everybody can understand it. Well, that's what I want this series to be about. I want you to take what many of us seem as complex and difficult, sharing our faith. And I want us to break it down, and I believe that bless, B-L-E-S-S, is going to help us do this. Now, I know you're not dummies, okay? I'm looking out at some of Houston's best and brightest out here. But you know we all have a tendency to make sharing our faith more difficult than it really needs to be. I was reading this book this week, and just so you know, we're, we're selling these books. We're making them available for you in the lobby right after this service is over. If you want to pick up a copy, we've ordered some. So if you want to go deeper in it, this is the outline that I'm going to be taking over the next three weeks. And I, I was reading through this book, just getting ready for the message, and my 10-year-old saw me reading this book. She said, Dad, what are you reading? And I said, well, I'm just reading a book on how to share Jesus with your neighbors. And she said, looked at me with a real quizzical look. She said, that's a big book, Dad. And I said, well, what do you you mean? And she said, sharing Jesus isn't that hard. (laughs) And she's right. It's not that hard. We have a tendency to make it difficult. And I think this study, Bless, is going to really help us. And here's what I want to do. I want to tell you the premise of this study. And then we'll outline uh, the Bless acronym. And we'll get into where we're going today. The premise is this. That sharing Jesus in the context of real friendships. And that's important. Sharing Jesus in the context of real friendships. Should be the easiest conversation in the world to have. It's also the easiest way to change the world. The difficulty is, the longer that we're Christians, the less non-Christians we know. The less non-Christians we're friends with. Oh, we have non-Christian acquaintances, and that's the point. They're acquaintances. They live next door to us or across the street, or they work down the hall and the office from us, or they go to school with us, but they're just that. They're just acquaintances. And again, make no mistake about it, God has put you in their life, allowed you to cross their path for a reason. And as we've seen, if we'll be open to it, if we will have a genuine friendship, they will listen to what we have to say. And I believe bless puts us on the path of initiating and growing friendships with those that don't know Christ. Now here's what bless means. B stands for begin with prayer. And this is what we're going to talk about today. Then next week we're going to cover the next two. And that is listen and eat. 
And then the third week, we're going to cover the next two, and that is serve and share. Now, it makes sense that if we want to love our neighbor and change the world, it begins in prayer. Prayer is what gives us the heart of God. Prayer is what makes us sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Prayer is what gives us courage to live by faith. It's prayer that allows us to even see our neighbor as God sees them. We'll talk about that in just a minute to even have a heart and a desire to love them. Prayer and sharing our faith, if it's to have any power at all, they must go hand in hand. And so I want to ask you a question. If you're taking notes, I encourage you to. I want you to write this down. This is, this is very practical. This is extremely uh, participatory, if you will. I want to encourage you, if you're not taking notes, to take a picture of this with your phone. Do this later during the week. But I'm going to show you uh, this little image on the screen here that simply says, Who is my neighbor? And I want you to look at this, and I want you to think about this. And you're right there in the center. I want you to think about the neighborhood that you live in. And I want you to... Write down the names of the neighbors that live around you, behind you, in front of you, across the street. Now, if you don't know the names of your neighbors, you got a little work to do. Because what I'm going to ask you to do is pray for people specifically by name. Now, for some of you, it may not be your neighborhood. You may know your neighbors or your neighbors may be Christians. This may be a good exercise for you to do in your office. And so you put yourself in your office. Who surrounds you in the office? The key is you write down those names. If you're a student and you want to put on your football team or if you want to put, you know, whatever extracurricular activity that you're in, you've got people that you know are not Christians and they're around you. The Billy Graham Association uh, tells us that the average Christian knows at least seven people who don't have a personal relationship relationship with Christ. God has put them in your specific sphere of influence. And so I want you to think about this and I just want you to write their names down. So important that you write their names down. Now some of you are saying, we ask this question, who is my neighbor? And in the Bible, we know that loving our neighbor is a commandment given by Jesus. In fact, it's been referred to as the greatest commandment. Matthew chapter 22 Starting in verse 39, when some Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. And the Bible says in verse 35, one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And he said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This was what our Chasing Sanity Worldview series was all about. It was about loving the Lord with all your mind. And we talked about this the last seven weeks. Well, this series is about loving your neighbor. And look at what Jesus says in verse 38. This is the great and first commandment, but the second one is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself on these two commandments. Depend all the law and the prophets. And so we have a responsibility as Christians to love our neighbor. And again, if you want clarity and a definition of who your neighbor is, it is whoever God puts in your path. And for this series specifically, I want you to think about who God puts in your path on a consistent basis. That's why we're doing neighborhoods and offices and school classmates. Now, there was another lawyer. I don't know what it is about lawyers trying to get all their questions out. There is another lawyer that came to Jesus in Luke chapter 10. And he wants to know who his neighbor is. And Jesus tells a story to explain to him, answer his question. And I want to begin in verse 25. This will serve as the basis for where we're going to go in the rest of the message today. We're going to pull it out of this parable. Jesus said this, And behold, a lawyer stood up to put him to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Now that's a loaded question, and I wish I had time to go into detail and teach this parable. But again, for the purposes of today's context, we're going to talk about prayer out of this parable of the Good Samaritan. Uh, Jesus said to him, what is written in the law? How do you read it? And the lawyer answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbors as yourself. So he just repeats to him what we just heard was the greatest commandment. And Jesus said, you have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But the lawyer 
desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? And Jesus tells this parable. Verse 30, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. And he went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. And then he set on him his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. Jesus then said, which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? And the lawyer said, the one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said, you go and do likewise. And so what I want you to do is I want you to look at that who is my neighbor image again. I want you to look on your piece of paper at the names that you have written down. And again... Who is your neighbor? Anybody that comes across your path, but for this series, anybody who crosses your path on a normal, routine basis. And I want you to write their name down because the application of this message is today. We begin with prayer because I'm going to ask you to pray for them every single day. And I'm going to ask you to pray for yourself. And I'm going to give you nine specific prayers. Three to pray for them. Six, to pray for yourself as we begin in prayer, blessing our neighbors. Now, I've noticed when I pray for someone who doesn't know Christ, God will typically begin to burden my heart to share with them. That's why prayer is so very important. Corey Ten Boone said this, We never know how God will answer our prayers, but we can expect that he will get us involved in his plan for the answer. So when we pray, God's going to begin to work in our heart. And prayer, I remind you, was the lifestyle of Jesus. Oftentimes the Gospels say that he would go up to a desolate mountain and pray. Anytime he made a big decision, before he made that decision, he would pray. Before he began his earthly ministry, 40 days in prayer. Before he called the disciples to himself, the Bible says he spent all night in prayer. Before he went to the cross, he went to the garden with his inner circle. And there he prayed. Jesus' life was characterized as a life of prayer. Now as it relates to prayer, here we are. Three prayers I want you to pray for the names that you have written down. You're going to pray for them by name. And I'm asking you to pray for them every single day. If you can't pray for them every single day, every other day. All right? If you can't every other day, once a week. But you're going to pray for them by name. You get the point. Consistency, okay? Here's prayer number one. I call it a prayer for reception. Here's what you're going to pray. God help. And you've got your map there. I want you to pray it specifically. You write that person's name in this prayer. God help so-and-so to have a soft and receptive heart. Specific prayer by name. Jesus would tell another parable in Matthew 13, talking about a farmer sowing seed. And the seed that ultimately produced the greatest harvest was the seed that fell on fertile soil. And we know that the soil represents hearts of men. For the seed of the gospel to take root, it has to fall on fertile soil. Our our hearts have to be soft. They have to be pliable. They have to be moldable. And we're going to talk about ways that we can cultivate the hearts of men in week three, specifically as it relates to service. That can make a heart more soft to the gospel. But it all begins in prayer. God, make this person's heart soft, receptive to the gospel. Think a moment about the hurt and the pain that exists in our world today. I mean, we have no idea what's going on in the lives of the people around us oftentimes. What they're struggling with at home. What they're going through in their marriage. 
Many people who don't know Christ and don't come to church have been burnt by the church in the past and burnt by Christians. And so any talk of Christ or his church, they're out in just a moment. Not gonna, don't want anything to do with it. Think with me. What is going to soften a cold, hard heart? The only thing I know, certainly to start, is prayer. God has to do it. And so we pray by name specifically, a prayer for reception. God, make their heart soft. Second prayer is a prayer for revelation. You're going to pray it every day. God, open, same name. Open so-and-so's name, whoever it is. Open their eyes and enlighten their mind to understand spiritual truth. People who are not in a personal relationship with Jesus don't understand spiritual truth. It could be that you're here today and you know you're not a Christ follower. And you're here because maybe something happened in your life or a friend invited you to church. And by the way, 83% of those that we are friends with will come to church if we just invite them. 83%. Maybe you're here today and you're not a Christian. And you're listening to this and you're trying your best to wrap your mind around it. Like you were sitting in worship and we're singing about that name and and we're calling upon the name of the Lord and it just doesn't make sense to you. And that's perfectly normal and perfectly natural. Because people who have not experienced the grace of God in their their life, they don't understand spiritual things. They're, They're spiritually blind. Paul said it like this in 1 Corinthians 2.14. The natural person, the person who hasn't been born again by the Spirit, hasn't been spiritually changed by Christ, the natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God for their folly to him. And he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Again, it's like there's a blindfold on. You're spiritually blind. You can't see. Those that don't know Christ, they they can't see things spiritually. Paul would later write, 2 Corinthians 4.4, that the God of this age... Satan, the enemy, has blinded the minds and unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For people to be able to see spiritually and to understand spiritual truth, there has to be a revelation. And so we pray, God, would you reveal yourself? Would you open people's minds and open their eyes to understand spiritual truth? Listen, everybody has experience general revolution, uh, revelation, so to speak. Like you look out at the stars in the sky, you see a sun rise or a sunset, and, and you can know, okay, there's a creator behind this. Like you put your hand on your pulse, nobody here commanded their heart to start beating this morning or their lungs to take in oxygen. There is a creator behind all of this. That is a general revelation. But a specific revelation is when God reveals himself to you Shows you who he is. Paul had that kind of experience on the Damascus Road when Jesus changed his life. For those of us that are Christ followers, we've all had this experience with Christ where he revealed himself to us. And it's like scales fell from our eyes and we think, I got it. How did we get it this week and didn't get it the weeks before? There was a specific revelation. God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, drew you to himself. And that's what people who don't know Christ need. And so we pray for God to open their eyes and enlighten their minds the third prayer you're going to pray every single day is a prayer for salvation and what you're going to pray is god i pray that and you're going to put their name fill their name in the blank i pray that they will come to know you in a personal way listen it is god's desire that the people he has you crossing paths with every single day it is god's desire for them to know jesus in a personal way the Bible tells us, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, the Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. One of the reasons that Jesus hasn't physically returned to this earth yet is because he is, he is patient, waiting for people to come to repentance. That person that you're praying for, Jesus loves That's why he came to earth and he died on a cross. It was an expression of the love of God. And the Bible says that if that person will call on the name of the Lord, they will be saved. And so what we're praying in this salvation prayer every single day by name is that Jesus, I pray that this person would call on your name. So we're praying by name for the person to call on his name. 
And in so doing, their life can be changed in a moment, but it's specific prayers. I'm going to ask you to pray them every day. And again, you've got to write this down. Now, here's why this is important, because next week you're going to come in here. And we're going to talk about the next two components of our BLESS acronym. And when you leave the church, we're going to have permanent markers for you. And you're going to take a permanent marker. And as part of our forward project, uh, that carpet in the lobby area right there is getting ripped up this week. Okay? And so next week, after the service, I'm going to ask you to take a permanent marker that we're going to give you. And you write the names of the people that you're praying for, as a prayer of faith, I want you to write their names all over the floor of this lobby entrance. Now, you got to come back next week to do that because then we're putting the carpet down. I can't have you writing on the carpet, all right? It's got to go underneath the carpet. But you come back next week. And wouldn't it be amazing for the people that you're praying for to one day make the invite to them and Without them even knowing it, you walk them right over their name that you wrote down, praying for them to come to know Christ. And so that's next. you got to know their name. Now, we're going to transition, and I want you to pray these six prayers for yourself. As you consider blessing your neighbors, it all begins in prayer. Six prayers, we're going to go through them very quickly, and I get all of these prayers out of the parable of the Good Samaritan. Prayer number four is this, a prayer of availability. And here's this prayer. You're going to pray it. God, I'm willing to be used for your glory today. Now, that today is important. Today. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. This is the day that you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. God, I'm willing to be used for your glory today. I love how Jesus shared this story. He opened up. A priest, a Levite, the Samaritan walked by. This man who was beaten, robbed, left for dead. Look how Jesus starts the story there in verse 31, the first part. Now by chance, a priest was going down the road. By chance? Come on. Nothing's coincidence with the Lord. He orchestrates the times and places that we live, the path that our feet walk. Nothing takes place outside of his sovereignty. And so as his children, this is a very important prayer. This is the first prayer we pray for ourselves. God, you guide my path today. God, you lead me today. You use me any way that you see fit. It's been said that God is not concerned about our ability or our inability. What he wants is our availability. And so the question is, are you available for God to use? Are you willing to pray this prayer and say, God, use me for your glory Today, talking about sharing your love and your hope with the people around me. Are you open to divine encounters? Are you willing to walk through doors that God opens? Are you willing to get out of your comfort zone if the Holy Spirit nudges you and says, you need to go talk to this person, you need to go serve this person, you need to go do this? This is a prayer of availability. God, I'm available to be used. Now all I need, God, is an opportunity. And that's the second prayer you're going to pray for yourself. This is prayer number five, second prayer for yourself, a prayer of opportunity. And what you're going to pray is, God, give me eyes to see others. And some of you need to put the name of that person that you've written down. Give me eyes to see this person as you see them today. Did you notice in this parable, only the Samaritan really saw this man. I mean, the the priest saw him and the Levite saw him. But they had too much going on. They were busy. They had things to do, people to see. They had events that they had to get to. Only the Samaritan saw this man as God sees him. And only the Samaritan actually slowed down long enough to do something about it. How different would our days be if we engage those people that we've written down saying, God, help me to see them as you see them. It's a prayer of opportunity. God, let me me see the, the hopelessness that they're carrying around. Let me see the the hurt that they have. Let me see the false gods that they're living for. Let me see people as you see them, God. You remember Jesus in Matthew 9 when he comes to Jerusalem, he sees the crowd. That's all the disciples saw were the crowds. The Bible says in verse 36 that Jesus looking at the crowds, he had compassion on them. 
because they were walking around harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. What would happen if you begin to pray, God, this is a prayer of opportunity today. God, let me see people as you see them. I promise you, if you, if you do this, you'll start to feel for them what God feels for them. And this is the next prayer. Right out of this parable, it's a prayer of empathy. Prayer number six. God, help me to feel for others how you feel for them today. Did you notice in verse 33, the second part, the Samaritan had compassion. Two others saw the same man. But again, blinded by busyness, had stuff going on. But this Samaritan, he felt something. He had compassion. Pastor Ray Pritchard calls compassion or empathy. I love this description. You're hurt in my heart. He felt it. Samaritan put on the sandals of this man and said, what if that was me beaten and left for death? What if that was my brother, my dad, my son? I'd want someone to stop and help him. Let's begin to pray every day. God, help me to, to feel what you feel. And if we see what God sees, he'll answer this prayer. And I guarantee you it'll lead to action. And this is the next prayer I want you to pray. Prayer number seven, a prayer of mercy. God, lead me to action on behalf of others today. Samaritan jumped into action. Read the progression. He saw him. He felt compassion for him. In the last part of verse 34, he went to him. He didn't wait for somebody else. He didn't write it off as this isn't part of his responsibility. Somebody else will do it. Didn't make excuses. No, he showed mercy. And in so doing, he showed Jesus. Man, what would our workplaces, what would our neighborhoods look like? What would our schools look like if every Christian started praying this prayer? God, it's a prayer of mercy. Help me, to, help me to jump into action today. Let me be your hands. Let me be your feet. I want to show mercy. Jesus said, go and do likewise. James would say, look, faith without works is dead. What good is it if somebody comes in and they have a physical need and you say good to see you gray go on about your way and you don't meet that need this leads to the eighth prayer and it's a prayer of ministry i want you to pray it every day god use me to serve others today and in this context those names that you have written down use me to serve this person today that's what the word minister means it means to serve and by the way listen you're never more like jesus than when you serve Mark 10, 45, the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. Philippians chapter 2, God left the confines of heaven in the person of Jesus Christ. The Bible says he emptied himself, taking on the form of a servant. John 13, washes the disciples' feet. Even Judas, that neighbor that lives across the street, that's a crotchety old guy saying, get off my lawn. You got to serve him. You got to love him. It's your responsibility. It's our obligation to the great commandment. And it's an opportunity to serve. We're going to talk a lot more about serve in week number three. But if they're your neighbor, you're called to love them and serve them. And then the last prayer I want you to pray, that's a prayer of generosity. And that prayer is, God, use the wealth and resources you've given me to bless others today. And this parable will told, told this man took this Man to an inn, took out two denarii, verse 35. That's two days worth of wages. And he told the innkeeper, you take care of him, whatever cost, and I'll make it right on the way back. That's being all in. That's generosity. That's saying, God, I understand that what you've given me, it's been entrusted to me. It's not mine. It's what we talked about last week. And what I want to do is lay up treasures in heaven, not treasures here on earth. And so, Lord, would you... Give me ways to bless others in your name today. I had a professor in seminary, professor of evangelism. And he and his wife in their bank account had a servant evangelism allowance. And part of their bills that they would pay, they would just put this over in a servant evangelism pot. And what they would do is use that every time they got paid. And they had a certain amount of money allotted to serve others, no strings attached might be 
blessing somebody by paying for their meal, taking someone uh, to have coffee and covering it, getting them a gift, showing them an act of love through gift giving, whatever it may be. The only deal was, if you do this, you have to tell them why you're doing it. You can't just do it anonymously. You have to go to them and say, listen, I, I covered your meal today as a way to bless you. Jesus has been good to me. And it's just a, my way of saying he loves you and I hope you enjoy your day. It wasn't preaching to them, just a way of blessing them. I think that's a pretty good idea. As we saw last week, this is why God gives us wealth in the first place. It's to give more. It's to release more so that we can bless others more. Now, I just want you to imagine. I just want you to dream with me. Because this is a three-week series, but I'm praying that it will be something that our church runs on. And be a part of of the routine of our life, one of the reasons that we decided to shut down programming on Sunday evenings is because that's when most people are at home. And we want to give you the opportunity to be a light for Christ right there in your neighborhood. And we're going to be telling you some ways over the course of the next couple of weeks. We're going to be coming alongside you and helping you so that those neighbors that you wrote down, not only are you praying for them, but we're going to see here in the next couple of weeks how we can set that to action. And I can't wait to see what God does. Listen, we celebrate around here all of the changed lives. God's done an amazing thing. Um, people that come into our church, God's blessing us. People coming through the waters of baptism, blessing us. We give him praise for that. But within a 20-minute drive, 600,000 people. So my point is, we got a lot of blessing that we need to be doing. And by God's grace, we're going to do it. Amen? Amen? Would you pray with me? Heads bowed across this room. and If you're here today and you don't know Christ in a personal way, I'm telling you, today is the day of salvation. Jesus brought you here for a divine purpose, and that's so you could hear the gospel message and you could give your life to him. And if that's you, you just pray a simple prayer of faith. Jesus, save me. Right now, in the stillness of this room, and Christians, I'm asking you to pray for people on your right, your left, in front of you, behind you. You never know what's going on. There's somebody here that doesn't know Jesus in a personal way. You just pray a prayer of faith. Jesus, save me. Turn from your sin. I'm tired of going my own way and doing my own thing. It doesn't work out. God, I want to follow you. And God, he hears those words of faith. You just use your own words. Jesus, I want to know you. I want to walk with you. He'll save you, change you in a moment. There's others of you here today. and You've been visiting Champion Forest. And you want to make this your church home. We're not a perfect church. I promise you, we don't have it all together. But we are on mission. And we want to tell as many people about Jesus as possible. We want to grow them up in their faith. If you want to be a part of a church like that, I want to encourage you to be a part of Champion Forest. And if you are interested in membership, just come forward. and We'll tell you about our membership class, get you the date so that you'll know to come. And that's where you can join our church. If you need prayer, maybe there's someone in your life that doesn't know Christ and you desperately want them to come to know Christ. Maybe you want to pray for them. Our pastors are here. We want to pray with you for that person. We believe that prayer works. That's why we begin in prayer. So Father, I have no idea how you're going to use this message to speak to hearts, but we trust you to do so. Thank you for your word that's life to us, God. And where you've spoken to us today, we want to respond in a way that is pleasing and honoring to you. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray. And everybody said, amen. And amen. As you look up, I'm going to ask you to stand up and the pastors of our church are going to be here and here and here and here up in the balcony area. You don't have to come all the way down. They're at the exit areas right there. If you want to make any decision, I want you to come right now as we begin to sing. Come on right now. You came with someone, they'll come with you. You to trust in Christ. Joining the church, needing prayer, you come. God bless you. Keep coming. Who else? God bless you. Who else? Sing it, church.
Across this room father we thank you for today Jesus only Jesus Lord we want to share in your mission you came to seek and to save and Lord we want to join you in that cause and so father for these names that you're putting on our heart Lord may we take the action step this week and pray for him every single day and Lord we believe that as we call upon you Lord you will move in supernatural ways using us Lord, to be a part of your mission. Thank you for this great cause. Thank you for those that came forward today receiving prayer, making decisions. Thank you for how you're moving in our church, Lord. We love you. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. And everybody said amen and amen. Hey, two announcements before you go. First, men, we had our men's night a few weeks ago with Mike Singletary. It was great. Well, ladies, you're up now. Uh, We have our Abide Women's Night. It's going to be at our North Klein campus. Uh, $15 a ticket there. If you're interested, just go online with Christy Knuckles out of Atlanta, the Passion Movement. Great speaker. This would be an excellent event to bring your friends to. Really encourage you, ladies, to be a part of that. Again, it's going to be at our North Klein uh, uh, campus and uh, encourage you to be there. And then also, if you're interested in the Blessed Book, they're available for you right out here in the lobby as you leave. God bless you. Have a great day. We'll see you next week.